Matsya the fish, one of the incarnations of Lord Vishnu, according to Indian mythology, has been closely associated with the lives of coastal communities from time immemorial. The seas around India are storehouses of a variety of fin fishes, shellfishes, and other organisms that are highly sought as seafood. Fishing was one of the livelihood activities in the pre-independence days. The fishermen in those days mostly employed indigenous methods to capture fish. The various developmental activities during the post-independence era transformed the indigenous fisheries sector into a fully grown industry. The motorization and mechanization of the fishing crafts, adoption of modern fishing methods, infrastructure development and market development led to increased output. The country now ranks seventh among the leading fish producing countries of the world. India's marine fish production has been around 2.7 million tons per annum in recent years. The income generated from this at the landing center level amounts to about 10,200 crore rupees. Fisheries provides employment for 10 lakh fishermen. Nearly 2 lakh fisher folk, including 5 lakh women, are employed in the post-harvest sector. Our seafood exports earn around 6,500 crore rupees and foreign exchange every year. However, the stagnation in production from marine capture fisheries is a warning signal. Sustainable production is possible only through appropriate management measures. The Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, CMFRI, was established in February 1947. It is one of the eight fisheries research establishments under the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, ICAR. The CMFRI is devoted to research in capture and culture fisheries, education, training, extension and transfer of technologies for development of the marine fisheries sector. CMFRI is one of the premier fisheries research organizations of the world. The headquarters is located at Kochi, Kerala State. Regional centers at Mandapam Camp, Tamil Nadu, Vishakapatnam, Andhra Pradesh, and Veraval, Gujarat, and nine research centers and 28 field centers are located along the Indian coastline. CMFRI has been served by many directors, starting with Dr. H. S. Rao. The Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute is the largest and the oldest fisheries institute in the country. Established in the year 1947, it has its headquarters at Cochin. The mandate of CMFRI to monitor the exploited and assess the underexploited resources of marine fisheries resources of the exclusive economic zone to understand the fluctuations in abundance of marine fisheries resources in relation to change in the environment, to develop suitable mariculture technologies for fin fish, shellfish, and other culturable organisms in open seas to supplement capture fishery production, to act as a repository of information on marine fishery resources with a systematic database, to conduct transfer of technology postgraduate and specialized training, education and extension education programs to provide consultancy services. The future of fisheries research and development in the country presents both opportunities and constraints. The Institute's research is focused towards developing methodologies for sustaining the productivity of coastal waters conservation of resources, and abating pollution. Our future areas of interest include mariculture, marine ornamental fish breeding, oceanic resources like tuna, management and conservation of fisheries resources, 
responsible fisheries, remote sensing, fisheries information and data management, and uh, production of black lip pearls from the Andaman waters. Our future programs are summarized in our Vision 2020 document. At CMFRA, we are striving to find a future for fish and man. The multidisciplinary researchers in capture and culture fisheries are conducted under eight divisions. Presently, the CMFRI is implementing 50 in-house projects, 48 sponsored projects, including 17 NATP programs and 11 consultancy projects. The country has a coastline of 8,129 kilometers and an exclusive economic zone or EEZ of 2.02 million square kilometers. The marine fisheries are multi-species, multi-gear and location specific in the various hydroclimatic regions. Our resources include pelagic fishes like the oil sardin, lesser sardin, white baits, mackerel, sea fishes, tunas, carangids, ribbon fishes and Bombay duck. The demersal fishes exploited are elasmobranchs, cyanids, perches, threadfin breams, silver bellies, catfishes, lizard fishes, flatfishes and goatfishes. The crustaceans captured from the seas include the shrimps, crabs and lobsters. A variety of mollusks like the squids, cuttlefishes, mussels, clams, oysters are also caught from our seas. The marine ornamental fishes are also commercially important. The ancillary resources are the sea cucumber, sponges, gorgonids, seaweeds and corals. The marine mammals, turtles and a variety of other living organisms are part of a biodiversity which are important from the conservation angle. A prime requirement for formulating development and management measures is the generation of data on our exploited resources. Of the many achievements to the credit of CMFRI is the development of the multi-stage stratified random sampling design for resource assessment. The staff attached to 28 field centers quantifies the landings of various fishery resources at 2,230 landing centers and harbors along the entire coastline on a regular basis throughout the year. The data processing and interpretation system at headquarters at Kochi employs modern statistical methods supported by state-of-the-art computer facilities. CMFRI has developed a database on region-wise, state-wise, district-wise, gear-wise, species-wise and season-wise marine fish production in India. The National Marine Living Resource Data Center, NMLRDC, is repository of all data pertaining to marine fisheries of India. The Agricultural Research Information Service, ARIS, disseminates information on fisheries to user agencies. Scientists regularly monitor the characteristics of major fishery resources at the landing centers. The Institute has developed a strong database on the dynamics of various fish populations. Aspects of biology like spawning, fecundity, food and feeding habits, age and growth of commercially important species are studied. Based on the information gathered from the studies, multi-species and mixed fisheries stock assessment have been made from time to time for planning, research and development activities and formulating measures 
for management interventions, conservation and ensuring sustainability. Appropriate software is also being developed for these interventions. Fishery forecasting is also a priority area. Studies on taxonomy have received adequate attention. Molecular and biochemical techniques are employed in genetic characterization of commercial marine fishes and ornamental fishes. The sacred changs hold a prime and pride of place among ornamental shells. Through extensive surveys, their annual stock has been estimated as 2 million individuals. All species of seaweeds of the Indian coasts have been identified and catalogued. Estimates of economically important seaweeds along the southeast coast are now available. The research and development at CMFRI have indicated pharmacological and industrial applications for a host of ancillary resources. As part of the studies on biodiversity and its conservation, the Institute has developed a strong database on marine mammals, turtles and a variety of other endangered organisms. The scientists, through extensive surveys on both the vessel FORV Sagar Sampada, has estimated the potential yield in our EEZ and indicated the fishing grounds for conventional and deep sea resources. The Institute regularly monitors the health of the ecosystem using vessels RV Kadalmeen and DOD vessel FORV Sagar Sampada. The database on primary and secondary production has helped us estimate the potential yield in our EEZ. The Institute has expertise in scuba diving for carrying out underwater studies. Training in scuba diving is also provided at the Tutikorin Research Center of CMFRI. The hotspots in marine pollution along the Indian coasts have been identified. Modern techniques are employed to study the pollutants. Monitoring of marine pollution is also an activity of CMFRI at selected centers. CMFRI has demonstrated that coastal fish production can be increased through installation of artificial reefs. Sea ranching of shrimp, pearl oysters, clams, sea cucumber and sacred chanks has enhanced stocks in their natural habitat. The institute has undertaken extensive tagging of some of these species to study their migration. With all the technological advancements and development in human resource and infrastructure, the annual marine fish production is stagnating around 2.7 million tons. The potential yield is 3.9 million tons, which includes 1.7 million tons available in the outer continental shelf, of which about 0.9 million tons is currently exploited. The exploitation of the resources in the deep sea is capital intensive and less economical. Mariculture, therefore, is a good option to augment production, generate employment among the coastal communities and provide good investment opportunities to the entrepreneurs. CMFRI has developed a range of mariculture technologies and package of practices for the endemic species of finfishes, shellfishes and other organisms of high export value and has established well-developed hatcheries at Mandapam, Chutikorin, Kochi and Calicut. In the shrimp hatchery at Mandapam, two species of shrimps have been domesticated and bred. Annually, 2.5 million post larvae are sea ranched for stock enhancement. Tagging and recovery of shrimp showed that they mix well with the natural population. The institute in its 3.8 hectare farm at Mandapam has demonstrated 
the drug-free, disease-free, and environment-friendly organic farming of shrimps. There is an adjoining lagoon of 225 hectares used for conducting scientific experiments. Hatchery technology for seed production of commercial crabs is also being developed at CMFRI. The larvae of highly prized lobsters have been raided up to stage 7. Attempts are on to complete the full larval cycle. The research center at Tutikorin is well known for culture of mollusks. The packages on pearl culture comprise hatch reproduction of spat and fattening them to huddled for production of pearls. At present, the white lip oysters are used. A new project is on for culture of black lip pearl oyster and production of black pearls. A pilot scale pearl culture unit under the ICAR revolving fund was initiated at Mandabam. Pearls and pearl oysters worth 4.7 lakh rupees have been sold by the institute so far. Pearl production through tissue culture biotechnology has received research attention. The idea is to culture pearls from the mantle of the oysters in the laboratory under controlled conditions. The institute has developed a green mussel hatchery at Calicut. The long line culture of green mussels at Andakaranazi and large scale adoption of the technology by the women folk at Padana are telltale evidences of success in mussel culture. Over 1,000 tons of green mussels are being produced annually using the technology developed by CMFRI. Shri G. S. Gul Muhammad, a mussel farmer of Padana village in Kasargod district, was awarded the prestigious Karshaka Shiromani National Award for the year 2002 for popularizing mussel mariculture adopting CMFRI technology. The CMFRI technology for edible oyster farming comprises hatchery production of seed, collection of seed on clutches and fattening them in open waters. The hatchery at Tutikorin produces millions of spat every year. The institute has demonstration farms at Tutikorin, Kuilon, Cochin, Kananur and Kasargod. The commercial oyster farm owned by self-help groups at Dalvapuram and Kuilon is a success story of technology adoption. Annual production is around 350 tons. In order to improve the quality of the oysters, the institute has successfully produced triploid oysters through genetic engineering. Clams such as Anadara grenosa, Paphia malabarica, Meritrix meritrix, M. casta, and Marcia opima have high meat value. The hatchery at Tutikorin has also developed the techniques for breeding of sea cucumbers. India is the only country which has developed a hatchery technology for this high export value species. Economically important seaweeds could be cultivated in the open sea separately or along with other marine candidate species. It is possible to produce 100 to 200 tons of seaweed per hectare per year in three to four months. Under the village adoption program, with the expertise acquired from the institute, the fisherwomen at Vadakadu village near Rameshwaram are able to undertake seaweed culture on their own. Your name is Ari. Your name is Ari. Adad. Sir, in the Pasi Valakra, in the Pasi Valakra, what do you know about the Pasi Valakra? Yadar tulis saya orang galak min beri kira angga, ada wujud tulis lah, ni orang yadar tulis lah saya. Indah mari training yang mana lari dia? Oru orang sama dengan. Yaitu nak kurun bayar lari beri kira? Iru orang jukurun bayar lari beri. Be minyak ni lari training yang lari dia. Hmm. Ipaning minyak ni lari lamong lari tak tanya saya beri mana? Saya beri. 
Under the ICAR revolving fund, an agar extraction unit has been successfully functioning at Mandapam. The agar produced has a good demand in the food industry. The groupers, breams, snappers and sea bass in live condition have good export market. Brood stock development, induced maturation, spawning in confinement, larval rearing and grow out culture of these fishes are being developed in the hatcheries at Cochin, Mandapam and Tutikorin. Live ornamental fishes are in good demand abroad. The institute has surveyed and assessed the stock of these fishes in the Lakshwadeep Islands. At Vyunjum, breakthrough has been achieved in developing innovative methods for the hatchery production of the clownfish, the filament tail damsel, yellow tail damsel, blue tail damsel, and seahorse. The Marine Research Aquaria at Mandapam, Vyunjum, and Calicut house a variety of ornamental fishes. The institute maintains pure stock culture and mass culture of a number of live feed such as microalgae and zooplanktons like rotifies, moina, cladocerans and brine shrimps and supply them to hatcheries and other laboratories. The outbreak of diseases has caused heavy losses to shrimp farmers throughout the country. Extensive studies have been made on immunology, molecular detection of white spot virus, DNA fingerprinting of pathogens, effect of toxins, pollutants and probiotics. The effect of marine natural products and marine bioactive metabolics on disease resistance also has been evaluated. The institute offers disease diagnosis and farm advisory services. Cost-effective, time-saving PCR diagnostic kit based on duplex assay has been developed. A transition come scanning electron microscope is a unique facility to carry out research in frontier areas. This facility at headquarters at Kochi is also accessible to researchers from other institutes. Based on studies on nutrition energetics and feed biotechnology, a variety of feed like the shrimp feed, crab feed, ornamental fish feed and different formulated feeds have been developed. The Mahima shrimp feed developed by CMFRI is comparable to imported feed in quality and food conversion ratio. Frontline extension programs are another unique feature of CMFRI. The Agricultural Technology Information Center, ATIC, established at the headquarters at Kochi, provides a single window delivery system for products and services available from CMFRI to all types of end users. CMFRI has undertaken an Institute Village Linkage Program, IVLP, in Elamkunapura Village in Vaipin Island. More than 1,100 farmers are benefited by the 39 technological interventions, including fisheries, agriculture and livestock. The Transfer of Technology Program mainly attempts to transfer different mariculture techniques like crab farming and fattening, integrated fin fish culture and shrimp farming to the end users and thereby empowering the fisher folk. The farmers, industry, institution, scientists meets which are regularly organized at different locations provide opportunities for efficient interaction between scientists and stakeholders. The institute has built up a database on cost and earnings and feasibility of different types of fishing operations. 
empowerment of fisher women by equipping them with environment and user friendly mariculture techniques shrimp feed production value addition techniques and other interventions is also an important activity of cmfri cmfri plays a major role in human resource development through fisheries education the postgraduate program in mariculture has produced 18 batches of MSc, MFSc and 14 batches of PhD students. The Krishi Vignana Kendra at Narakal is devoted to improving the living standard of rural people through training and capacity building in many agriculture related areas. The trainers training center at CMFRI Kochi is engaged in transfer of technologies developed by the Institute and allied organizations to middle-level personnel nominated by state and central government organizations, universities, banks and other agencies. The Institute has a consultancy processing cell, CPC, at the headquarters. This cell renders consultancy services on a wide range of subjects in marine capture and culture fisheries, biotechnology, environmental impact assessment, and pollution monitoring. CMFRI publications such as the Indian Journal of Fisheries, Special Publications, Marine Fisheries Information Service, Newsletter, Journal of Marine Biological Association of India, bulletins, leaflets have been well received in India and abroad. The Central Library at the headquarters has over 65,000 volumes of books. It subscribes to 78 foreign and 41 Indian periodicals. The library at Mandapam possesses many rare manuscripts. CMFRI has a reference collection museum at the headquarters and at Mandapam. Collections are representative of our rich marine flora and fauna. India's population by the year 2050 is expected to reach 1.6 billion and would outgrow China as the most populous country. Considering the per capita requirement of 11 kilograms of seafood, we may require 7.2 million tons of fish. Our vision is to ensure equitability and sustainability of the resources. Technological developments in both capture and culture sectors must have one purpose and must synergize to achieve this core objective. CMFRI is poised to meet the challenge through research and technology development and adoption by end users. The Institute has a vision and a mission to meet this challenge. Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute will continue its mission to ensure a sustainable future for man and fish.